So the goals of this preparatory class for the neural manipulation work is that we're going to introduce a little bit about what neural manipulation is. We're going to look at the cranial anatomy. We're going to introduce it by the PowerPoint slides, and then we're going to do some palpation on the bones and then each other's bones for the cranial, the bones of the cranium, the sutures, and the neural membranes. And then we're going to palpate for neural expansion, which is also the flexion of the cranial sacral rhythm, but it's a little bit more. So we're going to introduce what that is. So in neural manipulation, neural manipulation is a manual therapy, gentle hands-on therapy, just like any of our manual therapies. It's <coughs> helping to free up the nerves and the connective tissue of the nervous system. So when we look at what the nervous system is, we know that we have the brain, we have the spinal cord, we have all these nerve roots and nerve peripheral nerves that are coming out. They're enclosed by different layers of connective tissue, of meninges, of the pea, of the arachnoid, the dura. We're going to be learning about all of this in N1. Um, and we know that, that, that all that, that nervous system, the, the nerves, the brain, the spinal cord, and all the peripheral nerves, and their connective tissue are inside this container of the bony container of the skull and the spinal column. So we're going to be working with these different areas of uh, the nervous system to help them free up and move better. Again, the neural review refers to the nervous, nervous system of the body, the brain, the spinal cord, the nerves of the upper and lower extremity. So when we look at cranial anatomy, we know that if we're looking from the top of the head, the top of the cranium, we have the frontal bone, the parietal bone, behind that we have the occipital bone. Between the frontal bone and the two parietal bones, we have the coronal suture. The coronal suture is the queen of sutures. You'll learn more about them. A very important landmark, because a lot of what we refer to is in front of or behind the coronal suture. Between the two parietal bones, we have the sagittal suture, okay? The sagittal suture. The sagittal suture is going all the way from the coronal suture to the occipital. So what are sutures? Sutures are, have provided for, they provide for the growth and elasticity of the newborn skull. So this is a newborn skull, and you can see that it, it's really wonderful. The bones are like islands in a sea of dura. And they come from the dura, and they start to expand out. And as they expand out, they, there's these sutures that are, that are between these two islands uh, in the sea of dura. And they start to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then they start to uh, get a little bit um, more, they get closer together, and start to develop what we call sutures. So this is more of a newborn skull, and you can really, really see and feel sutures in a newborn skull. You can feel these fontanelles. So we have the anterior fontanelle, the posterior fontanelle, and different other fontanelles. That's not, the, the importance is to know what these sutures are coming from and what we're actually feeling for when we're working with an adult head. In a newborn, the newborn, the, the sutures begin to close after about three to four months, except the anterior now, which closes a little bit later, around 20 months at the average, is a whole span of that. So that's just where these sutures are coming from, okay, and what they look like in a little one. In an adult head, if you look, we had, we saw the, the superior view of the skull. If we look at the lateral view of the skull, again, we know we have our frontal bone, we have a parietal bone, and we have a coronal suture. If we go down a little bit farther laterally, uh, inferior to the parietal bone is the temporal bone. And so the, the, the suture between the parietal bone and the temporal bone is called the spomosal suture, just so you know, you might feel that ridge. And the suture between the parietal bone and the occipital bone is called the lambdoidal suture. So these are the ones that we mostly are going to be working with in this work. If you look at the base of the skull, again, we'll start with what we know. We have the occipital bone. And the occipital bone, this big hole is the foramen magna. That's where the spinal cord is coming through, right? And you see the, the occipital bone is continuing anterior to that big foramen magna. And it's articulating with this gray bone, the sphenoid. 
So this is the sphenobasilar junction, the sphenoid, the occiput. This is the base of the occiput. If you look over here, we have the occiput and we have the temporal bone. Between the occiput and the temporal bone, we have the uh, occipital mastoid suture. Sorry, the arrow is a little bit off. It's, it's this whole suture, and if you follow it, there's a hole here. This hole is called the jugular foramen. So we're going to be looking a little bit at that, that area because it's very, very important, the jugular foramen. So occipital mastoid suture is the whole entire suture. The hole is the foramen. The foramens are where these nerves, the cranial nerves are coming through, and the arteries and the veins. Um, you know, if you continue more anteriorly, you can see these are all the teeth. This is the roof of the mouth, the maxilla, and the palatine bone. So we're going to be working a little bit in NM1 with the maxilla um, and its relationship between the maxilla and the cranial base. So what we're going to do first is we're going to be looking at the skull and then we're going to be palpating for the bones. The frontal bone, the parietal bone, the temporal bone, the occipital bone, the sphenoid, the maxilla, and then we're going to look at these sutures. And the big ones for this first lab is the coronal suture and the lambdoidal suture and, then, and um, we will also be looking at the occipital mastoid suture which is between the occiput. The temporal bone. Okay. So what we'll do is look at the um, the cranium right here. You guys can come around. Feel free to stand up and <laughs> <laughs> over here. So let's look, because you know when we're working in cranial work, oftentimes we're working on the table, the person's lying down, so we need to get our orientation. We have the frontal bone. Oftentimes when we even feel where the coronal suture is, the delineating between the frontal bone and the parietal bone, it's a little bit more posterior than we think, right? Um, and you can see the frontal bone, the two parietal bones here, and the sagittal suture, okay? Now when we um, follow that sagittal suture back, we see that there's uh, a little bit of a, a V here, and this would be the lambdoidal suture between the parietal bones and the occipital bone. Okay, so on the skull, we follow the sagittal suture back, parietal bones, occipital bones, lambdoidal suture. Okay, now if you follow the coronal suture to the side, all the way down, it's not as easy to feel the squamosal suture. It's just not as easy to feel. It's not as definitive as the coronal suture, okay? But we'll be able to feel that. This is the temporal bone. So you know the temporal bone, the big thing is your ear canals are in the temporal bone. So if you stick your fingers in your ear canals, you're in the temporal bone, all right? So if you're not sure where you're going, this is a temporal bone. What I want to do first is the frontal bone, the parietal bone, and the occipital bone, and to feel, these, to feel this suture, this suture, the uh, lambdoidal suture, and then we'll get into the squamosal suture. All right. um, would anybody like to come onto the table? So go ahead and lie on your back. So we know this is the frontal bone. How far back does the frontal bone? You can just slide your fingers back and you'll feel a ridge. And it might, some people it's not so easy to feel the ridge, but it's about, it's, it's, it's pretty far back. It's not up here at the hairline, <laughs> okay? So you can slide your fingers back and even, you can even use your, the sides of your fingernails because you can feel a little bit of edge of the, of the ridge. It won't be uncomfortable. So, can, do you want to come this way with the... So right here, you can even feel it, can't you? It might, it's sometimes often sensitive to the coronal suture. 
Okay? And if I go behind it and come in front of it, I can feel that ridge. On the right side, hers is a little bit more prominent than the left. So we know this is the frontal bone. We know that behind this coronal suture are the parietal bones. All right? So now what we can do is, are you okay going on your belly? You can just put your, you can put your glasses here and your hands underneath your forehead. So we know that we have the coronal suture. Right in the middle of the head is the sagittal suture. And you'll feel like a, you know, a little bit bumpy oftentimes. And we can follow that back, follow that back, follow that back, follow that back. And we know that somewhere in this area we're going to feel for the occipital bone and the connection between the occipital bone and the parietal bones and the endodal sutures. It's not as easy to feel as the coronal suture. So, you can see on this skull, it's about halfway down, okay? So we can do the same thing. We can slide our fingers down and we can feel for the connection between the parietal bone and the occipital bone. It's not going to be the ridge, okay? It's not going to be, let's see if this has it better. Would you want me to hold that? Too? That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to be the, any of the ridge here. It's, it's not so distinct. This one's a little bit more distinct. Here. It's not going to be the ridge. It's going to be a little bit above that, okay? So I'm going to slide my fingers back. I know her occiput is coming all the way down here. And right here is the lumbar suture. Okay. So between the parietal bone, this is the lambdoidal suture, and this is the occipital bone. All right. So um, let's just do. Hi. <laughs> you for the study group? Yes. Oh, great. Okay. So let's just do those palpations. Feeling, and I want you to do it on two different heads, okay? So we'll go ahead and, and try, and we'll help you. Uh, okay. So one really important and interesting area is called the occipital mastoid suture. And the occipital mastoid suture is between the occiput and the temporal bones, and we start to palpate for that. Um, and the reason that it's really important is because in, in the close to the lateral aspects of the foramen magnum, we have the jugular foramen. And the jugular foramen, you can see we have important structures, the jugular vein, and the jugular vein is very important because it's draining most of the blood from the brain, right? So if it gets closed up and it compresses on the jugular vein, then you can get congestion and headaches and stuff. People's heads feel heavy. So uh, also the vagus, there's three really important cranial nerves, the vagus nerve, the glossal phreangeal, and the accessory nerve. And we know the vagus nerve is very important for the modulation, for digestion, modulation of the ner nervous system, for digestion, for almost all the organs except the lateral aspect of the, uh, the lateral um, two-thirds, <coughs> one-third of the transverse colon, the descending, the sigmoid, and your genital organs, right? So, it's all the parasympathetics of the thoracic and abdominal organs. Uh, also, the glossopharyngeal is very important for, for swallowing. And the accessory nerve is very important for the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid. So if this area is compressed, it can, it can cause all kinds, of, all kinds of havoc on, on, um, on the person. Um, just to see here, if you're looking at the cranial base, you can see the exit of the jugular vein, which is very important, as we were saying, for the drainage of the brain. So we're going to look at a couple of things, and then we're going to do a little bit more palpation. <coughs> One of the things that's really important, and we know this from cranial sacral work, is the dural membrane system, which includes the fault cerebri, the tentorium cerebelli, and the falx cerebelli. The, the falx cerebri, you can see, it's attaching right underneath the sagittal suture. 
So we're going to learn at NM1 how important it is that if you get listening to the Satchel Suture, it's indicative of tension usually at the falks. And the falks and the tentorium are housing these big veins that drain the blood from the brain. So they're very important for the drainage of the whole brain. So what we want to know is, look for, is, is the falks and the tentorium. So the tentorium is attaching, this is a, not in your handouts because it's, I don't have a copyright on the slide. Um, it's from Printing Osteopathy Book for Children by um, Sergio. But I love it because you can see very clear the attachments. It's attached to the occipital bone, the parietal bones, the petrous part of the temporal bones, and the anterior and posterior clinical processes of the sphenoid. So you can see that we have this very large and wonderful uh, structure here um, that has these attachments to the various bones. Tomorrow we're going to be doing a lot of listenings at a place we call the vertex. And the vertex is where, it's the top of the head, it's where a lot of the tensions of the a lot of the fibers of the falks are coming together, as well as a lot of the bony fibers in the cranium. So just to know that we're going to be working in this area tomorrow. And we're going to be looking at tomorrow at the various layers in the skull. We're going to be looking at bone versus suture versus membrane and brain. So what I want to do is just do one more lab. Um, we're going to do two more labs, but this next lab is to look a little bit more at the temporal bone, feeling like feeling the temporal bone, looking at where the occipital mastoid suture is, the jugular foramen, um, and also the uh, squamosal suture. So I'm going to go back a little bit. So what we're going to be doing is looking here and here, okay, to do a little bit of palpation. So let's uh, come around. And does anybody want to come on the table? First let me show you on the, on the skull. So as we did with the coronal suture and the lambdoidal suture, if you follow the, the parietal suture down, the parietal bones down, you'll feel the, the, the connection between the parietal bone and the temporal bone, which is the squamosal suture here. Okay. Now, if you feel you, in your own body, you feel your ear canal, and then go posterior to your ear canal, and you can feel the mastoid processes. Okay. So these are very important landmarks. We're going to be using these a lot in looking at uh, what's going on in the temporal bones. If you look and palpate for these mastoid processes, you can see that just medial to that is going to be the occipital mastoid suture. So we have the occiput. Now what's tricky is that there's a lot of soft tissue here. This is the spinal cord. These are all the muscles here. It's, it's not so easy to feel, but you can feel your mastoid process, and you can feel that, that space between the occiput and the, and the temporal bone. And you know that if there's a compression there, it's oftentimes compressing this big hole here, the jugular foramen. okay? So it's a little bit more anterior. That's where the jugular vein is coming out, and the vagus uh, accessory and the glossopharyngeal nerve. So what we're going to first do is palpate for the spinosal suture, and then we're going to be palpating for the person's mastoid process, having one hand on the mastoid process, one on the occipital bone, so we can feel that occipital mastoid suture, okay, on both sides. And then when we're on the mastoid process on the occipital bone, we can feel for where that jugular foramen is. So, anybody like to come up? Um, 
so many yeah. goaltenders. <laughs> yeah. And some of you, you're okay to be in the room. Okay. Your hair's nice and short. Thank you. Okay. So we have, we know that we come back, we have the coronal suture here. Okay. Parietal bones, we're going to slide down. It's not, her squamosal suture is not that obvious. It's right. Right here. Um, in, when there's a suture, there should always be a little bit of movement. So, just like you do with any manual therapy, you could also take the temporal bone and the parietal bone and move them away from each other and see where it moves. Of course, if there's a restriction, then it's not going to move. <laughs> but it would give you a better idea. So, it's another way of, of doing it. The same thing as we're going to be check, checking for the coronal suture tomorrow, and you can feel if you move that frontal bone anteriorly, if there's movement or not, and you can get more specific of where the coronal suture is. Right. So, um, on this side, her squamosal suture is right there. And on this side, This one's actually tight. <laughs> mm. Now, I'm going to go to her ears, go behind her ears, and find the mastoid tip. Okay? So I know this is her temporal bone, this is the mastoid process. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it on this side first. I'm going to have my hand around, my finger pads around that mastoid process and the other on the occipital bone, so I can feel the occipital mastoid suture. So hers is right here on that side, which is on this side. So again, what I'm doing is I have my hand underneath the occiput, this one on the temporal bone, and I can open a little bit to feel where there's an opening. But of course, again, I have to take choices on this side. And I can feel that line right between my, my fingertips. Okay. Now, I'm going to go between, between my hands. hands. Yep, exactly. Okay. Now, if I, I know that in the middle is the occiput, right? And if I go a little bit more anteriorly on that occipital mastoid suture, that's going to be where the jugular is. Okay? And again, remember where we are. We're, so here's a mastoid process, here's, here's a frame and magnet. Okay, so what we're doing is we're coming around the mastoid process and the jugular frame is a little bit more anteriorly. We can see it's facing anteriorly, like towards the ceiling with her lying down, right? So, you know, you can feel oftentimes where it's compressed. It's not necessarily feel the jugular foramen itself. Okay, so again, what we're going to do is we're going to first feel the squamosal suture. If it's difficult, come above where the external auditory um, canal is, the meatus, and, and feel for if there's some movement there. Okay? And then we're going to um, find those mastoid processes and see if we can feel a line, a movement between the occipital bone and the temporal bone. Okay, and then on both sides, and then anterior to that would be the jugular. Give it a whirl. Yeah.
<laughs> so, Jean-Pierre prefers to talk not just about cranial sacral flexion and extension, but of expansion of the entire nervous system. So what that means is not only the fluids, uh, the cerebral spinal fluid that we know is produced and pumped out through the whole meninges and the dural system from the ventricles, and this is, this is actually just from netters, and this is the, the flow of the cerebral spinal fluid, but he also says we include the expansion of the, the, the vasculature of the, of the nervous system. All the arteries in the brain, the arteries in the meninges, the arteries in the peripheral nerves. So thinking about, and the idea is that we're not limiting ourselves to, oh, it, you know, this bone goes this way and this bone goes this way. It's like, how does the entirety of that nervous system expand? So what we feel for at the, on the cranium is we feel like this, we're on the edge of this globe, and this whole globe is expanding out and then coming back in. So that's what we're going to be feeling for. So if you're used to, you know, it's the same thing as cranial sacral flexion, but if you can extend your perception, open up like any locked doors anywhere in your mind or your perceptual being, and, think, and just be willing to perceive a little bit more of a greater expansion. So that's what, you know, it's not, it's not a different movement in the, in the, in the dura or in the, in the bones or anything than, than cranial sacral flexion, but it's just a little bit more inclusive. Okay, so I just had a picture here of some of the arteries to the meninges, for example, so we can think about those. Um, and this is my poor drawing, but I tried. <laughs> So when we're talking about, you know, we're not just talking about what's going on in the brain, but the entirety of the spinal cord and it's all, it's the, the peripheral nerves. So if you can think of like, you know, here's my, you know, here's my brain, here's my, the dura around my brain, here's my spinal cord, here's my nerves. So everything is expand, expansion, everything is expanding out and retracting, it's coming back. And so we start to feel this, like when we start to do peripheral nerves, expansion is going to be more distal, it's more of an elongation, more of an expansion out and retraction is coming back. What we actually feel, as I said, we can feel the brain, the dural membranes, and the cranium widen and expand. The spinal cord lengthens, the dural tube lengthens and elongates, and when we're on the sacrum, we feel the sacral base. The base is the top. This is the apex, this is the base. So the base is going more posterior. So in a sense, you get more elongation, even it looks like a little bit more um, elongation of the entirety of the spinal cord, okay? And then when we have retraction, which is gonna be the extension of the cranial rhythm, the sacral base is going more anterior, and everything is coming a little bit more to the inner part of the of the nervous system of the brain. So we're going to feel for this. Uh, this is my picture on one of my little babies. Uh, the hand holds. So we have one hand at the vertex, which is posterior to the coronal suture, and the other on the occiput. And you can feel the expansion anywhere in the nervous system, just like the cranial nerve. So um, I have a deer. I just had a feeling she would have a good expansion. <laughs> <laughs> I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Now, one of the things is when we're trying to feel this, the biggest thing is that we're really relaxed in our own bodies. And Jean Pierre says, you know, feel very good in yourself, slouch back, extend your arms. So you're, you're relaxing your own body so that you can feel beyond what's going on yourself. So I bring my, my pelvis forward, I slouch back, I'm going to have you come a little closer to me. Okay. I'm going to have one hand underneath the occiput, and one hand on the top of the head behind the pelvis suture. And then I'm just going to cozy into myself. And I'm just, I'm not going to make anything happen. I'm just going to ask for that, you know, for myself just to feel what's happening in the, the cranium. And right now I feel an expansion. Ex 
expansion, I feel it more going towards the frontal bone, so I feel expansion uh, more in this area. And it's not just an energetic phenomena, it's a physical phenomena, so you're going to feel the whole nervous system expanding. Like the pump out of the, the old basketball <laughs> or something. <laughs> so it expands in all dimensions, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I'm just following her. I'm not directing anything. I'm just following her. Uh, I'm just feeling for motion. So, you know, that's all you have to feel for is what motion do you feel underneath your hand? Some places, because we all have different little dysfunctions, are going to feel more expansive than others. So, the other place that we can feel for this is at the sacrum. Okay? So, it's easiest if your, like, in your hand becomes the sacrum. <laughs> okay, the sacrum is a curved structure. And it's easiest if you're between her legs. So I'm going to have you come a little closer to me first and then bend this knee up, and then lift the hip. And I'm going to make sure my hand is comfortable underneath the sacrum. This tape is going to move in. All right, go ahead and put your knee. And then you can feel for the motion at the sacrum. You feel, you're going to feel an extension, a uh, flexion, or an expansion. And you're going to feel rocking back and forth. Okay. It's going to be easier to feel the, the expansion of the nervous system up at the head than it is down the sacrum. But it's good to get an idea of uh, another place to feel. Okay. It's a little, it is a little part of these tables. Um, I'm going to put a couple of nuts together so it's not so hard to Okay. You guys want to try this and we'll help you with our.